In this mini tutorial, we're going to think about two very important principles in neuroanatomy. The first principle is known as encephalization. And what encephalization refers to is essentially the fact that the, head, the brain is found at the rostral end of the animal. So encephalization is, is the principle that the brain has formed and what we seek to explain in most vertebrates is why is the brain found at the rostral end of the animal as opposed to say halfway down or at the caudal end. The second important principle which we're going to address in this tutorial is the principle of decussation. And what decussation refers to is the idea that in the central nervous system nerve axons cross the midline. So if I do a very quick diagram of the whole central nervous system here, spinal cord and a brain stem, decussation is the idea that a, a neuron might have its cell body here in one cerebral hemisphere and then that passes down to the spinal cord and actually crosses over to the other side before it synapses. So just to be complete, there's the midline and you can see that that axon has crossed the midline. So decussation is the principle of crossing over. And we're going to try to provide an evolutionary explanation for these two phenomena. So let's start off with encephalization. And the way that we're going to try to understand why encephalization has occurred is by looking at a hypothetical common ancestor to all vertebrates. And it is believed that this animal bore quite a striking resemblance to the modern day organism Amphioxus. And Amphioxus, or the lancelet, um, it's just a small eel-like creature. Uh, it has a notochord but no vertebral column. But it does have a spinal cord and a rudiment of a brain. So it's believed that this vertebrate common ancestor looked a little bit like this. So as we said, it is kind of eel or worm-like in shape. It had a mouth at the rostral end of its body and it had an anus at the caudal end of the body. So if we say here this is the rostral end and this is the caudal end. And of course this creature in order to get nourishment had a gut, a very simple gut. So here's our very simple gut tube here that this creature is believed to have possessed. Now it didn't have jaws or teeth or any kind of swallowing apparatus. What it had were cilia around the mouth and what these cilia did of course was to beat and to waft particulate matter into the mouth at the rostral end. So if we think about this arrangement, we've already got some asymmetry in the body of this animal. The, the animal was able to swim, and it would make logical sense for it to swim in this direction, so in the rostral direction, because if it swam backwards, it would, of course, have a tendency to eat what it, what it had eliminated from its anus. So the animal is believed to have swum forwards, gathering food in its rudimentary mouth using the cilia which surround it. Now, if you think about um, where to place the major sensory organs in the body, if we want to make it so that this animal can sort of direct its behaviour towards food particles, it would not make sense to place, say, a set of eyes, for example, at this point here. If you put a set of eyes around halfway down the body, or even down towards the caudal end, the eyes would only see the food after the mouth had passed it by. 
So what you need to do, what, what makes logical sense, and this is, this is the evolutionary hypothesis, is that the eyes, or rather the rudiments of the eyes, were placed here at the rostral end. So if you placed the organs of vision there up at the rostral end, any food that the animal encountered would be seen and then the mouth could be directed towards that food. Likewise, um, taste receptors, you would put those at this end because they would be in a much better position to detect the chemicals coming from food items. Now, as well as a gut, of course, this animal had um, a nerve cord, a primitive nerve cord, which I'm just going to draw very simply as a line there, and as you can imagine, all this information coming in from eyes, taste receptors, um, touch receptors on tentacles, for example, would need to be processed. And it would make most sense for it to be processed here at this end of the primitive nerve cord in this animal. And so this is believed to be the reason why the brain developed at this end of the body. Because you had to concentrate your sense organs at that end, because they were very intimately related with gathering food. If you place the sense organs anywhere else, you wouldn't be able to collect food as efficiently. So this simple idea helps us to understand why the brain is found at the rostral end, why the brain is in the head, and in fact why we have a head in the first place. Now let's go on to the next principle. In order to understand decussation, we need to think about just the same little animal that we drew earlier. So this hypothesized um, common ancestor of vertebrates. So here it is, as we said, it has a mouth and it has an anus and also it possesses this um, nerve cord in green, something akin to the spinal cord. And on the surface of this animal's body, there are sensory receptors, which I'm going to represent as blue dots. So these are the sensory receptors, which can detect touch or pain. And just deep to the animal's skin, which I'm going to draw in orange, are muscles. So there is a layer of muscle here, sitting just deep to the animal's skin. Now, of course, the sensory receptors have sensory neurons connected to them, and they project into the spinal cord. So let's consider um, a hypothetical scenario where we have a predator here approaching this primitive animal. So here's a predator, a sharp teeth, and it's attacking the animal here towards its head. Any pain or vibrations in the water will be detected by these sensory organs which then will send a signal in to the primitive nerve cord. Now let's think about possible reflexes that there could be. The first possible reflex that could occur is that the sensory neuron here could synapse upon an in a motor neuron there in the nerve cord in red and that motor neuron could stay on the same side as that which the sensory neuron came in and then synapse on our muscle there. So this is a reflex which does not cross the midline which I'm representing as this black dot here. Now in this case our orange muscle on the side that the predator has come in from will contract and the animal's body will actually bend like this bringing the animal's body closer to the predator. So this isn't <coughs> a sensible arrangement for a reflex of this type, for an avoidance reflex. If we consider an alternative reflex, however, once again, one of the sensory organs will detect 
the presence of our predator. It will synapse upon a sensory neuron in the nerve cord, but this sensory neuron will then cross over and synapse on the muscles on the opposite side of the body. The net result then being that in this case the head of the animal is pulled over in that direction and the tail of course moves over in that direction. Think about how a fish swims. So the whole body would kind of take on a banana shape and avoid the predator. <clears throat> and this is believed to be the mechanism whereby decusation evolved. Because by having neurons whose axons cross the midline, we could create these avoidance reflexes. If we didn't have any crossing at all, then we would not tend to avoid predators or other noxious stimuli. So, I hope that this simple mini-tutorial makes sense to you. If you like it, or if you don't like it, please feel free to leave some feedback. Thank you.